I'm the chairman of Histogen. It's really simple. We do one thing really well. We grow hair. That's it. So if you, if there's, it's end of the day. You guys are all tired. I, I'm exhausted. So I'm just telling you we grow hair. It's a real simple thing. Matter of fact, I filed an IND last Wednesday, accepted by the agency. We have the clock ticking. The phase one trial will involve about 30 plus women, 32. Phase one. I've done, these are physician-sponsored IND trials, over 100, 100, 100 patients. We've been doing probe studies, purification over the years of this company. And so this is a male. This is a U.S trial, treated 24 weeks later, he has it. And this is a woman which is untreatable currently. The only treatment for uh, female hair loss is transplants, and that's where we are. So what is this based on? It's based on our platform. Our platform is using stem cells. These are, mu these are multipotent stem cells. They're fibroblast cells. We actually create a hypoxic environment that the cells grow and they make these unique growth factors. These unique growth factors are then purified, and we make various things off this platform. Now, it's a, it's a fibroblast platform that we've scaled up now up to the 10 and 20 liter scale. It's validated. It's a, it's a master bank of cells using a, a bank of cells. It's been tested for all these viral agents, et cetera. But the interesting thing is it's validated by as follows. Whoops. What happened? Did I go back? It's not, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. We did a deal last year. I came into the company as a board member, and last year I was asked to take it over. And I took it over, and we raised last year $11 million and a non dilutive financing with a, a little small company called Allergan. Allergan bought into our idea of doing skincare products. We had six skincare products that we were selling through a third party. And Allergan, uh, after suing us for five years, came in and decided we were better than what they had and purchased the uh, uh, rights to the product. We have now partnered with them and are using them together. We are doing large scale because they're looking at scales of a thousand liter materials. We also did a, uh, a deal uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago, with a, Jap with a Chinese company called Wapoint uh, Dermatology, They're the largest dermatology uh, uh, clinic in China. And they financed and they helped this and they have rights to the hair growth product in China. Histogen has uh, both uh, the retail rights to uh, hair growth and right now the retail rights to hair growth uh, as well as the, uh, the drug rights to hair growth. It's actually one of those things that we're actually talking to partners. As far as other things, the platform itself generates a lot of different product opportunities. So that's really the three slides. I wanted to, to talk about and tell you about hair growth and other things and stuff like this because I'm not going to do 30 slides like some people do. So I, I listen to the rules. Well, great, great, thanks, Steve. Uh, well, let's let's focus on hair growth. Um, you gave us a little teaser there in that slide. Uh, let's start with the men. Um, what have you seen thus far? What are the advantages of your uh, approach versus current therapies? So. The current therapies are uh, in the hair growth, and you may know this from uh, commercials and things like that. There is, is Rogaine. Rogaine is minoxidil. It's done topically, if you, and it really just grows very fine hair. So they call it peach fuzz or baby hair, okay? Real hair, which is called vellus hair, which is thick, is in, Rogaine does not help. However, there is a drug for um, thicker vellus hair. It's called Propecia. Unfortunately, Propecia has side effects. It's a testosterone blocker and is not uh, used at all in women. So right now, uh, there are, in the United States just alone, there are 60 million uh, men, and I look in this audience here with these bright lights, I see there are people here who are follically challenged, males. Uh, there are about 30 million uh, women, and it's, it seems to be the worldwide ratio. It's a two-to-one ratio of women who have 
postmenopausal hair loss. Consequently, the only uh, therapy for that or people who want it is either cosmetic wigs or hair transplants. Um, and that's where they are. Hair transplants, on average, uh, in the United States cost somewhere between fifteen, dollars 20000 depending on where you are. If you're in Beverly Hills, where we did those trial of the man and woman, those were like $30,000 hair, tra hair transplants. It's basically $5 to $10 a hair. They harvest the back of your head, and they plant on top of your head. So it's like harvesting trees and planting trees. So tell us about uh, what's next for both men and women. What do those studies look like? So we have a phase one trial all teed up with my uh, CRO. Uh, I think hopefully she's done. She's out, probably outside. Uh, and we're working on a, a phase one trial that's going to be teed up and done it with Kim Butterworth at, uh, in La Jolla. So we're doing that. Uh, we have, because of our safety data that we have to date, we are planning, uh, we have a jet, uh, a undisclosed uh, partner in Mexico, and we have actually now registered with the Colfer Priest, which is the Mexican FDA, for a phase three uh, trial. Uh, we are planning to do a phase two trial uh, in North America in men, because the phase one data is already sufficient uh, to, uh, the data we've taken to date is sufficient for the agency to do a phase two. In terms of um, what's good enough to, to, to get approval, is it a percentage of uh, area re recovered, or how, how, how do we Yeah, it's going to be an interesting, and I, I think it will be an evolving situation. Right now, our prior trials were done where it was an objective. They would circle an area, and they would measure hair growth and things like this. But recently, there's been technology called a Canfield, which is actually a digital AI camera system where you can just count. You take a picture, and you can count it. So it's unbiased. So the Canfield system, we, we've done a deal with them, for the, especially for the Mexican Phase three trial, is we're, we're doing that. And so you can look at objective hair growth. The, um, we'll have, in the case of certain, uh, sort of probably a placebo, but we're still deciding what we're going to do on that. Uh, there is probably a, some placebo effect. If you actually inject solutions into the head, you may get some hair growth. But as far as we can tell, based on our prior experience of over 100, I think about 115 humans have been injected with the various uh, concoctions and purification of the material. And we've seen uh, you know, a fair amount of robust hair growth. So when will you start these studies, and when can we see data from them? So the first study will be uh, providing, and matter of fact, I had to step out, and I was listening to INREN, uh, and, and uh, I had to step out to answer a question, because the agency asked me for a question specifically. And so we will start, uh, if the agency approves it, so last Wednesday they accepted the uh, uh, IND, 30 days from last Wednesday, where that is, is, is when we can start. And we're all teed up. We have uh, GMP material. Um, a thing about histogen is we're in, uh, in San Diego. Uh, we are an FDB, which is the California Food and Drug Branch, approved phase one slash two facility to manufacture uh, products. So we have a fully functional facility. We have materials ready, sitting to be ready to be uh, used in uh, our phase one trial, as well as the phase three in, uh, in Mexico. So, so uh, when do you think you get data? We'll get data probably Q4, the first uh, safety data. Uh, completed safety will be Q4 of, uh, of this year. Uh, we'll probably have interim data. We know that in 12 weeks, especially from an individual who's lost a lot of hair, we can see results. And the can feel will be nice because we can just take photographs and show this to ourselves, uh, you know, from an internal, at least, uh, uh, viewpoint. Okay. Um, well, up on the slide here, we have uh, the, a little bit about Allergan. Talk about this. Talk about how... Um, you mentioned the lawsuit, how that's benefited you since they scrubbed your IP. Yeah, they scrubbed. And yeah. So I was on the board of Histogen almost 10 years ago when the, uh, it was, it's really technology that was part of a, a company called, that was an, a regenerative medicine called Advanced Tissue Science. And it had been conceived and ATS went belly up, Chapter 7. And um, Allergan immediately had bought a company called Skin Medica and immediately sued uh, Histogen. 
And five years later, uh, or six years later in lawsuits, I don't know how many millions were spent, $10, $12 million. Uh, thank God we had insurance. Uh, we won. We won twice, uh, three times. We won twice in the call local court, and then we finally won a district court in Washington. So our patents were upheld. And then two years later, well, Schemenica during that, uh, during that time was bought by Allergan for about $350 million. And uh, they decided that they wanted to look at regenerative medicine in skin. And they went around the world, and they actually, it's real funny, they went and paid a bunch of people to look at growth factors, and we were the only company that they found true potency in the, in the creams. And they came to us last year, it was like a luck, you know, here I am, you know, taking over this poor company, we're almost bankrupt, I've, you know, I've got venture debt or debt, uh, highly leveraged, and bingo, you know, miracles happen, and uh, they came, we negotiated really hard, and $11 million showed up, and that is more than enough to take us to the, to the um, uh, in major inflection point of having a completed phase one and phase three uh, hair trial. Okay, and so this deal is... Um Limited in scope, what they can yeah, use extreme. it for. So it was, it was uh, limited only in the aesthetic uh, markets, the medical markets, and if you know skin care, there is this business where the medical business where physician sponsors uh, clinical things where they, sp they uh, physician dispensed uh, skin care products, and that's a very limited uh, business. We, on the other hand, own the retail rights, and so we're right now in discussions with the three largest uh, retail skincare. And if you want to know what retail skincare, one of the companies sells forty-two billion dollars a year in skincare. And the things you should remind you: this is a payer. Um, you pay yourself. I mean, this is a pure, uh, non-reimbursable. It's pure payer yourself. Okay, so let's let's switch to your um, manufacturing. You mentioned you have um, your your process for getting the the cell characteristics that you're seeking here, and you're doing this yourself at your facility in California. So, you know, what is your capability right now, and mm -hmm. how do you see this scaling up in the future? Yeah. So one of the things about being a you know science driven company. We, uh, and, and being around long enough and having Gail Naughton, who is the, the founder of the company, um, she actually a, applied for an NS grant, NSF grant. It's an, what they call it, an SBI, or a, and we got a phase two. So we got like $1.8 million to help begin scale up. But part of the Allergan deal turned out to be one of the greatest things that I think we were smart in the negotiations was that they want to scale up too, so they have agreed to help us scale at the 100 liter and 1,000 liter scale, which capital-wise would have been impossible for a small company. So my team uh, at uh, Histogen now is actually in a massive tech transfer with them. And so what we're doing is we're learning how to get to that scale. At the same time, they pay us, which is really undercuts the whole, under, underwrites the whole burn process of the organization. So it's really, really nice uh, from that standpoint, from manufacturing. So, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the potential retail deal. If you're, if you're learning on Allergan's dime how to scale up, does that mean you want to be in a position to make the product for a, a retail Yeah, a yeah the, ev all the major retail people um, use a third-party manufacturing. So it's one of the fundamental decisions of the, of, you know, and it's a discussion we've been having at the board level. What is Histogen going to be? Is Histogen going to be a, um, a manufacturer of these aesthetic products? Uh, you know, in, their, in the process, uh, we also make extracellular matrix. And we have, with preliminary data, pre-IND meeting with the agency. The agency says file an IND for orthopedics. But again, that's we don't have enough cash to kind of run, have that runway. And it's part of really why we're coming out now. And it's really, this is the first announcement that we essentially filed an IND uh, in this uh, space. And it's taken a long time to uh, get us there. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you.